Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at exercise three for our simulation class. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the very beginnings of learning computational fluid dynamics, or CFD for short. And this is a segment where basically we get to look at what goes on with fluids. Now, fluids could include gases or, or literally like water, oil, whatever you want to test here. And in this case, this is a very light version. And we're going to be able to see here we've got the, uh, after it's set up, we have a, a ball valve. And basically, very similar, uh, not really exactly similar to this, but essentially what you have is the handle, which we're not going to model the handle. This isn't a modeling class. Uh, we do do a little modeling, but essentially we're just going to turn a little bit like that at about 20 degrees and see what happens when it's turned just a little bit off. Okay. So we're going to actually test with water. There's only two options in this light version of the software, which is called Flow Express. And there is a much more uh, uh, extensive version, you might say. So, uh, and you could procure additional higher levels of that. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, and this lesson... I wrote this some time ago, so please forgive. I'm not going to update the images too much because they pretty are, they're pretty much still relevant. I don't have time to update the 15 different software training guides I've created, but uh, it's still adequate. And here you can see it starts on page 49, and we're going to start by drawing that profile and revolving it. So there's a little bit of modeling here, and you may or may not learn something new. This, there's nothing really uh, extensive we're going to cover today as far as modeling. But this class does not require that you know SOLIDWORKS, so that's why I still have to go through it. And for those of you who might not know how to use SOLIDWORKS, so you will look, we will, we will see some modeling with that. Okay, so let's go to File. Oops, we gotta close out of here. Let's go to File, New. Now, if you're not seeing this, remember I had to tack this in. Normally, uh, this is not, oh, I guess it is out now. Okay, file new and I have a template I'll recreated it's in the ANSI inch uh, you could just select the part but then depend upon which region you're in if you're using metric or English you're gonna have to switch it to English and I'll show you how to do that but I'm gonna go ahead and use the ANSI my template and now if you need to change it we're gonna change it to IPS so over here go to IPS and change it to IPS inch pound second all right now, let's go ahead and select the front plane, start a sketch, and we're going to draw two center lines. So just hovering up above the origin, when you get the little dashed line, click and then connect it to the origin. Make sure you get the orange dot. And I'm just clicking with the left mouse button. And then go out about five inches off to the left here. Make sure it's horizontal. And then you could hit Escape. Now, go to the Line tool. And... Over here, just somewhere on this edge, you could uh, actually we'll start right at the middle. Click, drag this across. It should go approximately four inches. So get pretty close there. Drag it up about one and a half inches. So 1.5 ish is pretty good. Click and then here about 1.2 ish or so. And then click and then hit escape. So we're just making a little part there. Now we're going to mirror that to the other side. So to do that. After I hit escape, I can click and drag a fence to surround all the geometry with the exception. See that little center line on the left is sticking out. If it's not, hold control and deselect it. Basically, we just need to select these three object lines, which are the solid lines, and then the vertical center line. Go to mirror entities, and it should mirror to the other side. Now we could go ahead and add our, go to center point arc. And from this origin here, when you get the orange square, click connected to this point here click now it's going the wrong way reverse so go full clockwise all the way around once and it should give this to you and now hold on make sure you get the little orange dot or orange uh, yellow square to the right ear pointer which means it's locking a coincident there hit escape all right now what didn't happen here is that it didn't update so that means there's a gap there so click on that end after you hit escape click on that end point and drag it down a little bit and this should close it otherwise you could use the trim or extend tools 
that there might be a little gap opening there and you might have to close it. Okay, but if it shades in the center, you have a watertight boundary condition. Now go to Smart Dimension, click on this bottom line here, drag it straight up, make it eight inches. Now your dimension might be on top of the line. That just means you're in the ISO standard or the American National Standard looks like this. Doesn't matter, either one's fine as long as you're in inches. Now with this, go ahead and select this top line here, select the center line and drag it straight down and click and that's gonna be three. Or if you don't get that to cross over like that, just make it one and a half inches. Again, it doesn't really matter. Click on this arc, drag it out, make it three. All right, and now everything is fully defined. We're ready to revolve. So select the center line. After you hit escape, select the center line you want to revolve around, which is this one right down here, or this line down here. It doesn't really matter. Go to Features, Revolve, Boss, Base, and hit the green check. Now I'm going to zoom out with my wheel. Okay, or you could hit the F key as in fit or zoom to fit. Or you could go right up here and hit zoom to fit. You can see F in parentheses there. Click anywhere on the gray area of the screen to get rid of the highlighted blue geometry, which is just left over from what we selected last. Now go ahead and click on this space here. And with your middle wheel, hold that down and move your mouse to the right to expose this side. Now release the mouse, the wheel and hold control and select this back face. We're just selecting the two faces there that need to be shelled. So we're going to go to shell and set it to 0.3 and hit the green check. Now go ahead and select this face right here and go to sketch. While it's still selected, hit convert entities, go to features, extrude boss space, point three again. Do these dimensions really matter? Oh, not really. If you get point 0.1, point 0.3, point 0.2, it doesn't matter. We're not really using this. This is an end cap. And the full-blown version of this, because this is the light version of the computation of fluid dynamic software, you have to put your own caps on. In the full-blown version, it actually has a, an auto cap tool, which is really cool. All right, but anyhow, let's go with point 0.3 and make sure, click off of this, and make sure this merge results is turned off. You want it to be separate because it's not part of the actual model. Hit the green check, and we should have a cap there. Now we could mirror that across. If you just hold control and select the right plane, and notice the boss extrude one is still selected. Let's go to mirror, and let's go ahead, and let's see here. I believe we want bodies to mirror, so let's see here. All right, features, let's go to bodies to mirror. And let's select this one right here, just to make sure. Okay, and hit the green check. So it's a separate body, it's not gonna merge. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and now we're going to change the transparency level here. Now to do that, you just right click on the, the model somewhere. And let's go over here to the beach ball with the pencil, hit the little arrow. And at the very bottom, there's a little silver ball. Go ahead and select that on Go to Illumination on the tab here and change the transparency amount to 0.8, which is basically 80%. And if you click anywhere else, it should update. Now you can see through it. Hit the green check. Now from this point, we're going to go ahead and we want to uh, add in the, the valve inside. And I don't know if you can see this. It's like a, that's why I call it a ball valve because there's a little ball in there. We've exaggerated ours a bit. Okay, so just for fun. Let's now go to the top plane, start a sketch, hit your space bar, and go to top. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take the center line tool. So hit the little arrow next to line, go to center line, and out here somewhere, click, make sure you're hovering in alignment with the origin. Then lock into the origin with an orange dot. Drag this straight up, click, um, and then double click. Oh, darn, uh, just hit escape. We didn't want those, so you could hit Control Z. We really don't need the vertical one either. Let's go back, Control Z is undo, or you could hit the undo button up here. Now let's go over here on this point again and drag out a line at an angle. 
and now hit escape and let's put in some dimensions there. So go to smart dimensions, select this line and this line here, and that's going to be 20 degrees. That's the opening angle that we have. So essentially we're going to be setting how much we want this tilted. So like that. All right. Now hit escape, click on this line right here, and we're going to offset that. So go to offset entities and set it to Let's see here, uh, 0.8, hit enter, and hit the green check. Now we need to turn this to wireframe. I know even though tr transparency, we can see through it, wireframe is going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go to hidden lines visible actually. So now you can see this edge, click on that edge, which is a silhouette edge and hit convert entities. Actually, we have to select it again. There we go. Hit the green check and it should convert that inner edge of the wall. Now we could go to trim entities. Now if you hit the little arrow under there, you'll see trim and extend. I'm gonna show you how you could trim and extend with just the trim entities tool. Make sure you're on trim to closest. Now over here, you're gonna click and hold and drag to the arc and it will stop right at that arc. Now over here, I want you to go close to the end of that arc, click and drag to this line and release and you see it extends it. Now click here and drag this to this arc. It should extend. And now just click one time on this little fragment and it should chop it off. And now you have a volume. And from here we hit escape, select the 20 degree angled line and go to features and revolve boss space. Now make sure you turn off merge results. It's a very important part of this. If you put it together, I mean, I guess it will still work even without it. But if we're trying to make like an assembly here inside that we can alter pretty easily, let's go ahead and hit the green check. Let's leave merge results off. All right. And now we could go back to, there we go, actually, that's fine. And now if we rotate, hit the space bar, go to isometric or control seven. And now we're ready to put in our uh, geometry here. And I think actually I used the wrong dimension here. Hold on a second. You might have to fix it. I gotta find my training guide. Oh. Ah, yeah. We were supposed to be in point 0.9 for that that hole. So that's easy to fix. So over here on the revolve, hit the little arrow. Actually, you can double click on it and you should be able to see that point eight in there. Oops. Double click and make that point nine. And you could leave yours. You don't have to change it. I'm going to change mine to point nine. Hit the little rebuild button, hit the green check just for consistency's sake. I, I want to make sure I following the training guide there. All right. At this point, now we could go ahead and save it and save it as E3. And for those of you in my class, go uh, hit underscore and call it CFD for computational fluid dynamics. So you don't get it mixed up with any other classes you might be taking with me because everything we call E3. All right. Now we're ready. Let's go to evaluate the tab. Go to flow express analysis wizard. And over here on the left, it gives you a little welcome. Just hit the next button and click on view fluid volume. And here you can actually see the geometry uh, that we're going to test for. That's the opening, basically. That's why we had to cap it, because otherwise it, it, it'd be immense, the space. So we have to make sure we put caps on. Hit next up here. And we're going to do water. If you're, you have the full CFD version, you have a bunch of options. So you have a whole libraries full of information, but we're just going to do water hit next. Okay. Now we have pressure, volume, flow rate. We're going to do mass flow rate and we're going to do 25 pounds. And I know some of you, anyone else around the world, you're like, why are you guys using pounds still? I, I just, I am, I could do, I can do metric metrics actually much easier, but we'll go with 25 pounds since here in the States. 
All right, we'll leave the temperature at 68.09. That's like the average ambient temperature. Hit next. Oops, we have to specify the inlet. Okay, for this, I'm gonna zoom up a little and see this on the very back here, get in the center of this circle. It's really an ellipse at this point, but right click and find select other. Now you have several faces to choose from. You want this one right here. See how the edges of the second little face on the inside highlight? So go ahead and select that. And once you got that, you should get these little arrows pointing inward. That's the mass flow, 25 pounds. Hit next. And now here we just have the outlet. And the pressure here is 14.69, which is the barometric pressure that we have here on Earth. So we could leave that. Now, if you're on Mars, that would vary as well as the moon, of course. Um, but let's go ahead and right click on here and select other. And that face there, the first one I got, look for the orange ring around this edge here. And notice the arrows pointing in both directions. That's because there's no pull or push. It's just that's pressure that uh, equally on both sides. Hit next. And at this point, you could hit solve. Now, I actually wanted to show you here that this is a multi-threaded process. So here we could see as it's solving, I have 16 threads. And it did it pretty quickly here. So it was utilizing all of those threads. So the more threads you have, the better. So it's good. This is why it's good to get a very high power workstation for computational fluid dynamics. It's one of the more intensive things out there. All right, now you could see we have trajectories. And if I hit play here, we could see the fluid flow there. And we get the velocity in inches per second, which if you were just to Google what, uh, what that is, is 6, 634. Uh, if you do miles per hour, that's, prob that's around 34 miles per hour or something like that. Okay, so that's at the peak. So any red entities are getting that high. Whereas the blue entities we see are very low, that's where there's almost zero, between zero and 100 inches per second. Now you have the ability to stop that and go with balls. And then you could increase the number of balls there and hit play and you get the animation. And here what we're looking for now, those of you in my class, we're just starting to look at computational fluid dynamics and we're just doing the very basics. It's mostly just using the software. Um, computational fluid dynamics you could get a PhD in so just note that we're not going to go into it nearly that deep but as far as um, this goes in the training guide I have we're looking for either turbulent flow or laminar flow and the, the balls are a little hard to see that but let me give you some examples let's change it back to pipes here and see how they're all layered. That's layer, laminar is Latin for layers. And so if you see layers, that's great. Turbulent is chaotic flow. That means it's just getting caught up and maybe spinning around and things like that. And we could see some of that down below here. And uh, that doesn't look too bad there, but we have a low pressure drop. But Actually, I shouldn't say that. We're not, we're not able to see pressure here on this light version. In the full-blown version, you can see pressure, you can see temperature, and all these other things that are very important for this. But what happens when you have a rough or chaotic flow, which is called turbulent flow? It could be damaging to things, especially in high pressures. So that's what we're looking for here. And that concludes this exercise. Those of you in my class, all you need to do at this point is do uh, an alt and print screen on your keyboard, drop it in a Word document, or you could, because uh, don't send me these files. It's, it creates a whole bunch of files, so I don't, I don't want them. I just want a screen capture with the chart here and that. All right, and that concludes this exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.